welcome back to another video. And I filmed this at the end of 2020, it's like December December 30th, and so it's way to the end of the year, and so I just wanted to reflect on this year, and I thought what better way to do it than to share with you guys some things that I've learned um, from passable months of medical school. I'm officially now one eighth of a doctor and just finished my first like semester, yay, and so I just want to share with you guys the things that I learned these past couple months. Grab a drink, grab a snack, it's going to be a chatty video, and I hope y'all enjoy. And so I made a list of the things that um, I didn't expect from med school. It's actually not that long of a list. Um, just for background, like I guess I just wasn't really exposed to like the medical field um, in some ways that I see some of my peers happen, just like through their parents or like their siblings and stuff like that. And so that's why like, some of these things I just personally didn't expect because I didn't really have like an immediate family member, someone who was like super close to me, um, who went through this process. So many things seem very obvious to some people, but to me, I guess it just wasn't that obvious. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so the first thing I learned was that medical school is only one class. So technically, it's like two classes, and this might differ from school to school. Um, but at UM, it's basically just one class, like either like biomedical principles of health, which is like the MPH, and then for the or like systems, signs, symptoms, and disease, um, which is the class name of the class I'm taking now. It's just one class, and then we have another class that's called medicine as a profession. That is just like everything else, like the patient interactions, the standardized patients. Um, bedside sessions, public health, like basically everything else is grouped into this other class, but that's only one time a week. Um, but our primary course is basically just one course, um, and so we learn one block at a time. And our school is also um, a little bit different in the sense that we don't have anatomy class, which I know is a separate class for a lot of other schools. Um, but you, um, um, it's just like the one main class, and then there's math um, once a week on Thursdays, and so every day is. The same class, just different lectures for the same class, if that makes sense. <laughs> so the second thing that I expect was that I would have to change my study habits, basically from um, professor to professor, and our professors change so often, like either like it, it could change like daily or it could change weekly. Um, you just never really know until like they post a schedule for that week. And then because every professor has like a different teaching style and lecturer style, you never really know like what's the best way to learn for that like for that specific professor. Like is it better to just like sit there and listen to them talk or is it better to learn from like a lot of outside resources because um, they are really just highlighting like a few points instead of touching on every point. Some professors give you like every single thing you need to know um, in a PowerPoint. Um, but you never really know until like the week of just because like the professors change so often, especially in the very beginning when it was just like the basic sciences, the professors would basically change every single lecture um, or like at least once a week. Um, the time when we didn't have any change was for cardio when we basically had one professor for the entire like I think it was four weeks or however many weeks it was and so that was nice being able to just like get a handle of things and then like being able to stick with it and like because like with every like different professor like I kind of had to figure out um, how was the best way for me to learn from them and so that was so that's something that will happen um, at school. I don't know if it's different in other schools or whatnot, but at UM, um, I, I basically have found that I have needed to change up my study schedule almost weekly. And the third point is something that I talked about in another video, which is that you still have to shadow. And it's not like mental gives you a list of all the things that you need to do for like residency or just like in general, but you should come into medical school knowing that you still need to shadow um, and then obviously find research and all that. Um, but I just didn't know why. I didn't know that you still needed to continue to shadow, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. So that was just something I didn't expect coming in. And so the fourth point that I learned was how early we actually start patient interactions. Um, I think we were we had our first standardized patient, which is not obviously a real patient, but we had our first standardized patient in like the first two weeks of medical school, which I really did not expect. Um, I also mentioned this in one of my previous videos. Um, anyways, and then we had our first like real patient encounter, I think one or two months ago, so about two months into medical school, we had our first like bedside session, which is where we go into the hospital and then we try to interview an actual patient at the hospital. Um, and perform any relevant tests that we have learned. 
And so I definitely didn't expect to be thrown into the hospital so early, but I really do appreciate it because obviously the sooner you get into the hospital, the more comfortable you get with all these things that you have to learn. And because like you see like these are the things that you're you're seeing the things that you're learning in a real patient, then like those things like stick a lot more. At least like in my case, like seeing like my kind of gravis um, makes it a lot more interesting when I see it in a real person versus like just learning from a textbook. Like I, those things just stick with me a lot longer. So it is really nice that we actually get to have these patient interactions a lot sooner. And also like it also helps remind you of like the whole reason why you're in med school, you know, like oh, I want to be able to help these people and it's good to reaffirm that, especially when like things get tough and like you're like studying aimlessly for hours and hours and hours and like why am I doing this? So it is really nice to also be able to see um, the goals that you're working towards. But the next of which, I kind of lost track of which point this is, but the next thing I want to mention is that public health is integrated into med school law. Um, and so I didn't choose to do the MPH or anything. I know like a quarter or like 50 of our of my classmates out of the 200 are doing an MPH, a Master of Public Health, but I personally chose not to do it. Um, but anyways, I didn't expect so much public health to be intertwined into our curriculum. It's so important to learn public health, to understand the patients that you're serving, and to understand health in a different lens because you can't just understand like the basic science and expect to like treat a person perfectly. Um, you also have to like take into account all these other factors, and that is what public health teaches you. And so like I'm very happy that like public health is actually integrated into our curriculum. Or if you have never like systematically learned public health in the past, like, you will still get a little bit of insight into what it is um, in medical school. Um, for example, um, all of us have to be a patient navigator, which is basically you help the patient achieve whatever um, health goals that they have. It's kind of like social work, except not really. Um, that's the best way that I can explain it. And so I really value like having these experiences. The next thing I learned in medical school is that you actually study all day, but you have a lot more free time than I than you would initially expect. Like although like all of my time is like dedicated to studying, like you still have some of your personal time. Like I can still go out for dinner or I can still go grocery shopping during the day and not feel like any stress. And this is probably just because like this is my first year. Um, part of it was virtual. Um, I don't know how much of that played a part into things, but. It has been really nice to be able to have like one or two hours of the day to yourself or even more like if you are like a dedicated like studier who like super, super intensely focused and like I know that some people just have like the entire night off like some people I know like don't study after like six or seven um, just because they like are super focused on their studying during the day and they set those hours to study and the other hours to like for themselves and so that's really nice to be able to not burn out and etc. And so, even though you are studying like all the time, like I'm studying like all the time, um, it's not as bad as you would think. And, and going off that point, something else that I learned was that it's important to have picked up a hobby or for you to pick up a hobby. And it could, it doesn't even have to be something like art, which is my hobby. It could be something just like hanging out with friends, grabbing food, grabbing drinks, etc. Like just finding that one thing that like makes that makes you feel at peace and makes you happier. Um, will definitely benefit you in medical school because like for reasons I don't have to state like mental health and stuff like that like it is extremely important to be able to have that like outlet for you when things get tough. And the next thing that I learned about medical school is that every year basically is a different level of like toughness and like a different level of challenging. Um, I thought like all four years are going to be challenging like at the same level challenging, obviously in their own way, like it's not the same level, um, but from what I've heard from other students and stuff is that the first year is the most relaxed and it is the time we have the most time for ourselves, um, which kind of does make sense because all, because all we have is like that one or two classes in the morning and then the rest of the afternoon is ours, we can shadow, we can do research, we can have fun, etc. Like it is for our own time, um, but once you hit rotations, that's a whole different story. Like I've seen it from so many friends. Like that's they, they're a completely transformed person from pre-rotation to after rotations. And you know, because rotations start during second year, um, start very early on second year, um, you just have a very big shift in like the amount of time you have and the responsibilities from year to year. And so 
I didn't know this, but every year medical school is going to be different. And the first year is the most relaxed. The second year, you're going to be dedicated to rotations. Um, third year, you're going to be applying to residencies and stuff, I think. And then fourth year, um, you continue applying to residencies and stuff. And then after you get into residency, you're done um, for like a couple of months in the spring, I think. And so every single year is a little bit different. Um, and so that's just something for to know for you guys who don't like me, didn't have like someone immediate who is in medicine who could share with you these things. Because <laughs> I feel like that is a pretty obvious point, but yeah. And the next point I want to make is that coming to medical school, everyone is coming from a different starting point, and so it is really important to not compare yourself to others because if you do that you're just never gonna feel like you're enough but you have to remember like literally we are all coming from a different point in our lives like in my college like basically everyone enters when they're like 17 18 or even 19 um in medical school like i have classmates who are in their 30s i have classmates who have families or have been nurses and i have other people who work in like banks and like economics and some people who like directly came out of college into medical schools and people who took a couple gap years as a research assistant like myself. And so we're all coming from a different starting point and we all bring our different strengths and experiences into school. And so even though something might be extremely easy for someone else because of their past experiences, um, it doesn't mean that you're lacking in any way, shape, or form. You just have to remember to not compare yourself to others and that is a really important lesson um, that I also took away from college, but it's extremely important coming to medical school, having a, a growth mindset and not, and I don't really know where I'm going with that, but for those of you, any of you out there who are going to medical school, like, don't stress about, like, not having, like, XYZ experience, like, yes, it would have benefited me if I took genetics, but it's fine, I'm still here, like, I feel like I still did well on the exams, like, ultimately, I still got to the point where I needed to be, and so, if, even if you feel like you need, you need to pick up that one experience that actually isn't needed, then like, yeah. And I could make, I could talk for ages on this topic, but moving on. <laughs> the last point I have is to basically just do what serves you. Like this is a point that's really important in life in general, but I feel like it's even more important in medical school. I used to be the person in school who like who would say yes to everything because like I got college for the time to like do everything and I don't regret any of it. Um, if you have to watch some of my past videos, I also mentioned this briefly. But in medical school, it's even more important to basically hunker down on what you think is the most important for you and to say no to the opportunities that may sound amazing, but you don't have time for and you don't have the capacity to dedicate your all to it. And just focus on the things that, like, that actually really matter to you. For example, like I could have taken um, a specific leadership position in an uh, organization that I really enjoy, but it wasn't a leadership position that I wanted. And so I said no to it because I'd rather help serve them in a different way instead of that leadership position. Like past me definitely would have said yes, just like just to be in that organization because like I believe about the vision and mission of the organization so much. Um, but I did say no and then and but to just be a normal volunteer because I only have so much time and I want to be selective about the things that I say yes to and to make sure that those are things that I truly enjoy. Because honestly my time is limited and so I want to do something where I can put my 100% into it and to not stretch myself out too thin and stuff like that. So I think it's really important to just see where your priorities are and to go from there. And that's basically all I wanted to say today. Um, if I think of anything else that I learned, I'll just pop in the description box or something. Um, this is actually a list that I've been um, compiling over the past couple of months. And so these are things that I have been wanting to include in this video for a while. And I hope y'all enjoyed and cheers to the new year. And let's hope that it's a better one. <laughs> okay, see you guys in the next video. Bye.